Alright, well, who's ready for round two? Here's the deal. Before I even start the video, there's a few things that we're going to uh, address. Okay, so I can't tell you how many comments I got. Literally every other comment said I needed to either shorten the length on the chain or either extend the boom out some. And while well, I can't extend the boom out some, it's, it's literally as far as I can get it. And as far as the chain goes, I needed to have some slack in it, and I'll tell you why. It was because of this. I don't know if you've been following the page, but you know, there's like three cars that are using all of my jack stands. I only had like freaking 10 and I don't have any more to loan out or use at the moment. So I was like, hey, I've got like three sets of ramps. Let me pull it up on some ramps. But the problem with that was put it at the stupid awkward angle where we're like positioned upward like this, you know, quite a bit off the ground here. And so in doing that, guys, I needed to have some length on the chain to pull it out. Now, another thing, another thing before I forget, there was like five comments that said, oh, he beat the crap out of the car. And ladies and gentlemen, this is what happened. If this is considered beating the hell out of a car, then you should own a Prius. So so ultimately I did make a mistake and the mistake was pulling it up on, up on some ramps. And then guys, once I had it up high enough, I could, it's not like I could drop it down some and then shorten the chain. I did think about that, I did, but there's no, there was nowhere to set the, uh, set the engine and I didn't want to break anything. So, you know, we're doing a, we want to do a solid for this guy, you know what I mean? So, but anyways, a few comments gave me some good suggestions and you know, I can't take it off the ramps because I, I still don't have my jack stands back, but here's the deal. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to release the air in the tires, okay? And then I'm gonna use some two by four. So, thanks for the comments. So here she is. Alrighty. Oh my gosh, dude, they even left the electrical connections on. All the electrical connections are still left on. This is probably the, the fastest engine pull you could possibly do. Here's the deal, this engine has 82,000 miles on it, so I'm more confident on using the parts that came with this motor rather than the parts that are on the old motor. So we're gonna reuse this compressor, we're gonna reuse this alternator. Hopefully I don't have to freaking change those out. Um, I'm gonna leave this thermostat housing on. So we're gonna leave all that stuff on. The only thing different that I'm gonna take off uh, is the intake manifold, and that's because this is like a Japanese version of the vehicle, so we gotta, you know, we gotta make it a USA version. I can totally understand why they cut all this off because this was kind of a pain in the ass. And I had to remove the entire intake for just this. Ah, uh, it's the old seatbelt trick. Well, you know, when in Rome, here's the whole wiring harness. Okay, so I did make the chain a little bit tighter, which I'm I'm feeling like this is gonna bite me in the ass because I, I have to I have to have enough length to drop it in there as well as get it over. So don't use ramps next time. Okay, so one thing that is extremely important this right here you do not want you want to have this hoisted up or something because if you put that engine in and this thing's like downward or upside down or backward dude you're gonna have to lift it right back out and then fix that either that or you know disconnect it completely from the transmission to the cv axles and then you know do all that so i mean your choice okay so as you can see we're at the you're at the top of the engine right now i say you're right on the top of the engine and we there's no way to clear this so what we're going to do is we're just going to remove the ramps completely and then i'll just have to jack it up slide it back in once we got almost everything in there uh, to get you know the bottom and backside bolts that i need to get to so let's get it. look at that didn't have a problem now so made it over no problem now here's the tricky part we just got to uh, drop it down and so that's why it's good when you have two people. So I can like, you know, hoist this thing downward as somebody lowers it. It gets a little tricky when you do it by yourself. Gee, not so fast. Almost summertime, baby. A little break, getting hungry. So basically guys, we gotta like go down some and then correct it and then go down a little bit more and then correct it and then get a phone call. And before we drop it the rest of the way in there, this is for you, okay? All right, so if she wants to cooperate, she's gonna go straight down. Oh, beautiful. To make sure we're lined up, we need to set this pin right into that guy. Dude, at least put them closer together. All right, now we can drop it and then start connecting mounts and then, you know, whatnot. And honestly, guys, the wires kind of just go right where they need to go. You know what I mean? You can easily tell this gets plugged into here. Oh, oh boy. Oh, boy. All right, this right here is this bracket that I pulled off of right here, and I'll tell you why. All right, so this bracket goes right here. As you can see, it lines up perfectly fine. But take a look at it, all right? 
it is a little bit different from this bracket okay so initially i couldn't get this mount on this bracket it set these two bolts this one and this one i still gotta put the bolts in there but uh these two bolts right here it didn't line up it was like way too short see that there's a better visual so so from bolt hole to bolt hole it was way too long so I got a little bit nervous about that, okay? So then I was like, all right, let me just pull it off of the other motor, put it on here and see if it works. And which, as you can see, it does. Right, but I did have to take the uh, transmission mount out just to get that to align up. And then that was kind of a pain in the ass to align. And then we went over here. So leaving everything loose, I went to install this mount. I lowered my jack and this is as far as it'll go. So as you can see, the uh, mount's still loose. I only put a couple in on each one just so I could, you know, get the motor aligned before I tightened everything up. But this one stops just right here. And then I started to notice that belly pan. And so the reason why this one is a lot more shallow is because the this one, if I drop it down any further, it touches the subframe. So, because before if I took out the other two mounts and I tried to lower this into position, uh, it wouldn't shift forward any, at any like not at all. I couldn't get it to shift forward. But if I dropped it st straight down, then that belly pan right here would hit this subframe. But how I even got this motor is after I made the, vi the video for the gentleman that made the GoFundMe and we got enough money for it, I had a company reach out to me and say, hey, we have a motor for you. It's got extremely low miles on it. Um, it'll ma it matches perfectly. Um, it goes in, you know, 04s and uh, this and that. They said the only thing that I'll have to do is change over the uh, intake housing, which obviously I did. <clears throat> or I mean the, the airbox housing, not the intake housing, my bad. So it wasn't even that serious. It was just the airbox housing. So because one was cable driven and the other one wasn't. But you can see that's an obvious problem. So I don't know. Maybe I can go to the salvage and then pull a couple different mounts off of a, uh, a different vehicle. I'm not sure what type of... This had to have came out of a Camry. So I mean, maybe like an 01, maybe an 02 or something. So it looks like we got a little bit of a rabbit hole we got to go down before we can get to the bottom of this So hopefully I don't have to like fabricate nothing up. I mean, I will if I have to but again I've never had to on a motor mount. So that, I you know, a little bit nervous about that I don't know if you can tell but it is pretty dark out I mean it, like I guys this this motor realistically should have taken me like maybe four hours tops You know taking it out and putting it in um, versus you know I it was like a couple days that I had to wait to install it back in because we had appointments that we had to get to but uh, as you can see, you know, I've worked on this thing way longer than I should have because I was like, why is that not lining up? I tried everything that I could um, think of. I, I, I took all the motor mounts out. At one point, this thing was just up by my jack, period. And uh, I was trying to position everything and that one down there just I couldn't get it. So, um, I mean, I did see some pictures of some thicker ones and some they had, a, you know, a little bit different style of a housing. So, I mean, maybe... I don't know. I just have to. I guess I just have to go to a salvage and see all the different types that they have and see, you know, get an idea of what I need to do. So just stay tuned for part two on this, and uh, I'll get it posted. Here's the deal. Oh, we got spring break that we're doing. I, by the time you're seeing this video, we're probably on our va on our vacation. So. Um, you know, I'm a little bit behind on my edits on my videos, but uh, as soon as I return, I will for sure figure this bad boy out and we'll get it going. Everything's working just fine. It's just that, it's just that lower motor mount. So if you guys got any ideas, shoot them at me. You know what I mean?